Alright everyone, uh, TFT patch notes for 11.6 have been dropped. The patch goes up tomorrow as I'm recording this video, but today if you're watching it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so, the general thing about this patch is that not a lot is going to change significantly. Um, Riot's basically ready to go to Worlds, and they're just going to slightly push things in one direction or another to keep the meta moving, moving along at... The, the pace it's going and not changing anything too drastically so let's go ahead and get started so some champion changes at tier one um diana's attack speed is getting buffed if you don't recall when they did the big one tier um one cost nerfing uh diana got hit really really hard and in the last patch they buffed her and in this patch they're buffing her again uh I don't know if Diana reroll is ever going to get into a place where it's playable. I mean, I you could probably play it now and maybe get top four, but it's still not a great build. Um, it requires a lot to go your way, and your opponents basically have pretty trashy builds. But it should... Yeah, I mean, I'd probably play it if I was just trying the top four games. If I got a chosen Diana, just play it anyway. Especially if it's like chosen um, spirit. If it's chosen spirit, I think you, you, you gotta go. Uh, Garen, uh, Garen's getting a three-star buff, um, they nerfed Garen a few times, and it's kind of hurt Warlord and Vanguard a little bit, um, actually, no, they specifically hit Vanguard, that's right, they hit Vanguard a couple times, um, they did hit Warlord, though, Warlord got hit too, and Garen just hasn't been seeing a lot of the late gameplay, so they upped his three-star, so if you want to hyper-roll Garen and play Karen, hehehe. <laughs> Gary Garen, um, you can, I, I, the big thing was that they didn't touch the two star, uh, if they touched the two star, he'd probably be a bit too strong, so, um, I'm fine with seeing this, uh, Tristana, so this was a surprise add-in to the, to this patch, so Tristana 3, um, is getting a huge nerf to the, um, bonus attack speed, 2 is getting a slight nerf, but 3 is getting a big nerf, uh, this was needed. Um, Tristana 3 carry is a bit too hard, in my opinion. Especially the sharpshooter variant. Um, so, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see this change. This, the, Tristana was just way too strong. Especially compared to all the other one cost. 2 star. Lulu no longer targets the same unit twice with wild growth on a double cast. What this means is that Lulu will not ultimately tie every single match when she is the last unit left in overtime i've done this so many times it's not even funny if you're playing mage you have a lulu it is the last unit standing she would double cast on herself and be practically immortal um now she'll only cast on herself once and usually die so no more free draws not that you really want to draws but it's really funny to watch uh nautilus um they buffed his starting mana i i my assumption was that this was to make him stronger as just like a standalone vanguard but in reality this actually just makes him stronger as a fabled unit because it means he's getting his shield up a lot faster uh vi uh the armor shred this isn't really them nerfing vi this is them moving vi to the standardization they set last patch for uh armor shred values and in return i don't think it's noted here oh that is noted they, they buffed the damage up a little bit they did. I was confusing with what they did the last whisper. Uh, Zed Zed's getting a buff across the. Um, they're setting his AD steal to be consistent across all levels. Zed is just not being the carry they want him to be. There's not much else to say there. Zed's supposed to be a pretty strong unit in the early game because he's a ninja, so he can get the ninja buff and be an early carry that you transition off, or you can just roll him and get up the three star. He just hasn't been doing that f since I can't remember the last time we were actually playing Zed carry. To be honest, it's been it's been that long. Three star changes. Aurelia three is getting a buff. Um, so I've played Aurelia 3. Aurelia 3 is actually pretty good. I'm kind of surprised to see this buff. It might have just been the fact that my Aurelia 3 had the Assassin trait, and this thing crushed with the Assassin trait. Uh, Katarina, damage buff on 1-star uh, and 2-star. Uh, like Warlord's kind of just disappeared. Uh, I think part of the issue is that... Um, 
Katarina can't hit both corners at the same time. She can only hit one corner. And this is problematic when a lot of people are just bunkering in a single corner. That you can bug out Katarina to make her alt in a position that's not going to hit your corner where you just burrowed your carry. Uh, so I don't think this will change too much. But the added damage on particularly one star is pretty nice. Because one star Katarina is like really bad. Tier 4. Uh, Cho'Gath is getting more uh, tanky. Uh, it's interesting that Cho'Gath is functionally pretty much identical to what he was in set 3. Minus having Void. The Void synergy, which I guess is probably part of it. But um, no one's really playing him. Uh, most people are playing Sejuani Aatrox front lines. And they're not playing Cho'Gath. Uh, maybe it's a factor of we're in the late game and you don't have the brawlers you want to work with to make a brawler front line. Maybe it's the fact that brawler front line in the late game just isn't that good. But um, in general, uh, Cho'Gath just hasn't been seeing a lot of play. Uh, so he's getting a buff to make him probably... Try to make him probably more in line with Sejuani in particular. I don't know if this is actually going to change any of that, to be honest with you. Uh, the Aatrox said Johnny frontline is just so good. I don't know why you'd play anything else. Olaf, 5 AD nerf. This brings him down a little. Makes it more appealing to play Trindamir if someone's already carrying Olaf. Talon. Talon getting a bunch of buffs. I'm actually really surprised at this. So Talon is probably one of the worst performing four-star carry, four-cost carries in the game. I'm not surprised to see that at all. Um. Especially since the real carry of that comp is Morgana anyway. But, uh, he's been really weak. He, he doesn't, he, he's, I, I think probably the most telling example was watching a, what was it that got four starred? Was it an Aatrox? Yeah, so uh, a three star Aatrox essentially does more damage than a Talon. Uh, Aatrox has AoE and hits like five things at once at three star. Well, I'm not quite sure why a Talon three shouldn't like just one shot anything. So they buffed up his AD and his base damage to hopefully make him a bit better. I am a little worried, particularly at the one star buff here. It's a pretty good buff. Um, if you get an early Talon, it might be a pretty strong unit to carry you on towards the end game like if you get an early talent in the mid game it might be wise just to like hold him play pike and just do some assassins to knock out some uh to save some uh lp or L life lp life five costs yone uh so same mr shred that we talked about before with either doing that the yone it's not going to functionally change anything at three star yone will kill anything with unforgotten this means nothing in fact, this all it probably just kills things anyway. Item changes. Eternal Winter is finally going from slow speed 50% to 35%. I'm not quite sure why this took so long. Eternal Winter was busted. It was really busted. I, that item was obnoxiously good. Uh, Last Whisper Armor Shred. Same thing with I being standardized to 70. In return, Last Whisper is getting a duration increase. I don't think this was really needed. Last Whisper is actually a pretty good item in the current meta. I'm not... I, I honestly am not sure this was really that needed. But... I mean, we'll take it. We'll throw it on our Samira and watch our Samira 1 with Last Whisper kill everything. That's fair. Uh, Locket is also getting a nerf. Um, this basically goes along with Tristana nerfs. Uh, one of the common early game builds was the stack lockets, play Stratana, and put everything in the back line, and, like, you couldn't physically kill through the locket shields fast enough to beat Sharpshooter for Tristana 3. Uh, it just, it just never happened. You couldn't do it. Sunfire Cape is no longer a unique item. Each Sunfire Cape on a unit will search for its own burn target every two seconds. I have no idea why they even bothered to do this, to be honest. But it's hilarious, and I love it. Uh, I, I don't even think having two Sunfire Capes is ideal in any way, shape, or form. But it's funny. I enjoyed looking at this patch note. Bug fixes. Keeper is now properly dispayed. Zillion Rebind Fate. 
failed to find targets if Zillion was in... Oh, the invulnerable state. Okay, so yeah, there was a bug where if um, Zillion was in Paradox invulnerable state, that the alt didn't properly target on units, most notably Zillion. So it was it was a really odd bug that kind of got people angry pretty often, I might add. Uh, Darius. Okay, yeah, if if a unit dashes away from a Darius, all the Darius will still hit it. There are units that have... So, like, I find it really confusing that some units aren't affected by this, but some units are. Darius is one of them, yet um, Wukong is not. Like, Wukong's ult will literally hit from all the way across the map, but Darius' ult? Nah, not a chance. This is weird to me. Um... More Darius chain is uh, where he wasn't unstoppable during his chain attacks. It's not surprising. Talon, Wukong, now look proc. Trap, Claw, and Stun. Uh, this is probably because they were considered physical attacks, I assume. And fixed bug with cannons. Slicing Mouse would occasionally stop casting if hit with another cannon. Yeah, so cannon's alt is supposed to last as long as he is alive. It does not. It's not supposed to end when he is stunned, which is why it continues to impact the game state when he's in GA state. So, like, if you kill a cannon, his alt goes away. But if he dies and is in GA state, his alt stays up, which is why GA is so good on cannon. Um, so overall changes, I think the big thing here is probably, um, Talon. Talon is the big one to look at, because this, ba like, Enlightened Talon was basically, like, a low B comp. Like, you basically play it when you had the items and you hit an early Talon or Morgana. Or, like, if you had good Morgana items and good Talon items, then you could just play both and be like, eh, okay. Or if you were running, like, Siphon or 4 Morgana, which is a wild comp, I might add. So, I'm, I, I think now that that's, like, a higher B-tier class, especially if Talon can start one-shotting Kales. If Talon's starting the one-shot Kales, this build is a lot better. Enlightened Talon just instantly becomes way better. Um... In the early game, Diana Chosen. You can play Diana Chosen. Gives you a top four. Be happy. Uh, the Tristana carry is pretty dead, I think. Um, if you play it, you have to transition off it. You have to have some way out of it. But to stack all your items on a three-star um, Tristana is not going to cut it anymore. Especially combined with the locket nerfs. I'm surprised they kept this here because they increased the duration. It should probably be under adjusted. But anyway, uh, that's about it. I don't think much else is going to change outside of the enlightened changes in the early game Tristanas. Um, I don't expect much to change on this patch either. I think this patch probably hits it right on the spot where Riot's going to want it going into Worlds. The only exception being is if Talon becomes, like, kind of a monster, which I, I don't think the changes are that significant, unless it gets to the point that we can't even play Kale anymore. He's such a monster. But anyway, uh, that's it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this patch notes video, and I'll see you all around. Peace.